possible to find uh, to to provide as an example my previous model from Russia. You know, I just I found my customers. I know how it works in Russia, and then to go to US or UK and find the right okay. channel without any paying customers there. That's the question. It works. It, it works. It, yeah, I do because I think that what you're talking about is how do you replicate a model that you've already been successful with in one country to another. So one of the first things that you have to ask yourself is whether the market dynamics work in the same way. Does the, mar does the route to market look the same way in the other country? And you have to look at it from the very high level. If it works the same way, basically the same kinds of organizations, you just want to say, well, who is the guy in the UK that does what this guy does in Russia? And you know the profile of the kind of partner that you've been working with. You know the model that worked for you in Russia. What you want to do is you want to find who's the, who is that guy in the UK, right? Is that what you're asking? Yes, and uh, how should I pick him? How should you pay him? Well, you know, this again, this again, every country, every country, every country is going to have different norms about how their business model works. Basically, what you're asking, I think, is how do you understand the different business model and how to adapt a business model, a repeatable model, from one country to another, right? Strategic partnership what? is one way of doing it. All strategic partnership. There are a lot of multinational corporations that might help you to define the differences of the channel for your specific solution in each single country. Don't waste your money in order to explore it. Use the big guys. <laughs> Use them. They are making enough money uh, uh, to try and support you and share their experience with you. Okay. In every marketplace that you go to, it's going to be different, no matter what you do. So you have to find out what, what's, what's the common parts and which ones aren't. Um, it's also going to change because you said lawyers' offices and doctors' offices, and then you've got on there barbers. Well, barbers don't have a whole lot of technology, and at least not in North America that I've seen. Um, so <laughs> but I don't really need that much. Um, <laughs> Sorry, um, but you know, so to go to them, you're not going to go through your typical IT channel because they're usually, for most of them, are smaller companies who buy their technology on their own. So the technology market's not the same place. Doctors' offices um, and what was the other ones? Lawyers. They use they use channel partners for everything that they buy. Most of them. As soon as you get past about six or seven, or not even that about three or four lawyers, because then you, once you have about three or four lawyers, that's about 12 to 15 uh, staff usually, um, they, you know, they're, they're using uh, the IT channel. So it's totally different, even just from every little marketplace that you want to go into and out of. And some you can be successful with the IT channel, some you're never going to be, um, just because they don't sell them. Hi, my name is Baruch Bookbinder. Um, two part questions are basically the same. Uh, we've talked about some great ideas from you guys on the uh, panel here, but basically, how do you look for a uh, partner or channel partner? Uh, in my case, it's a hardware software combination. It's the healthcare industry, it's the alert system, plus uh, emergency lights and so forth, but it doesn't really make a difference. How do you find, what's your first step? and trying to get the right partner okay, uh, in the U.S., Canada. And then after you have the right partners, perhaps, how do you look for the right person to be your salesperson or your manager, whatever, in the U.S.? Because eventually you're going to need someone to manage those people in the U.S. to do it right versus from Israel. The U.S. is a little bit too far for an Israeli to do it properly. The first thing is, is that you, you, you need to go out there in your part in, in the marketplace that you're in. There's some really large players in North America who sell the products. Um, but even them, they don't do most, most of them don't do a lot of the um, uh, s service and support on top of that. They don't do the installation. They just sell the products. There's a lot of shows that are specific to healthcare, like trade shows. Um, you need to start getting to be known inside that industry so that they'll come to you or that you can go out to them. On top of that, the major distributors, especially 
the ones that I, I, I talked before about the, um, the um, industry from the top four mass distributors. There's two enterprise um, parts. Can I just stop you for one second? Yeah. I haven't, that doesn't work for me at all. I, I'm not in that type of business. It would kill my whole business. I'm looking how would I find the right partner. If, if it's a major distributor, it could be IBM, it could be at t it could be ABC store. How do I go about such a large market for you answer? I appreciate it. In the US, I mean, I've sold in the US, I've sold well, and I've gone IPO, okay, because of selling in the US. But there's a difference between being a salesperson and running a company, trying to find that first company or companies or distributors or reps or whatever they may be to start me going. How do I find these right type of people? And then once I, I'm establishing one of those sellers, to find the right person. To run that organization in the U.S. as a sales manager. Okay, so where I was going with that was with the two, the, they're called Arrow and Avnet. They have great systems for it. They've really done a lot of work. They might be the best place for you to go to, uh, most likely. The other four, like in, in the areas where you're talking about, um, because of the president, some of the stuff that the president of the United States has done. Um, that they've they've taken three areas that they're trying to look at more than anything else, and one of them is uh, small government. One of them is um, school, like K K to twelve, and then the, and the first one on the list is healthcare. So because of that, all the major distributors have got divisions um, just specifically for healthcare and to get you in there. So what you need to do is to go into them, work with them, and I, we can help you pull you through there. And like we can go from start to finish to take you, you through that process. It wasn't clear to me. Your solution is a hardware software solution? It's mainly hardware, but there is software. But it's mainly hardware. There's a lot of technology involved. There's a lot of... So is it first, well, let me just ask you this question. This is, this is the question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I mean, because this is what, you know, I think this, this is the first question when you ask, how do I find the right guy? The right guy is going to be the person who has the trusted ear of your customers. You know who your customer is, where you're trying to get to, right? You think a tech, you think a technology guy needs to sell your solution? Or do you think a healthcare guy needs to sell your solution? Because if you're selling to a hospital, I mean, I don't want to get into too many details here, right? But let's just think of it at a very large level here. You're selling to a hospital, right? Hospitals buy lot of stuff, right? The question is what kind of expertise, when someone walks in the door to sell that solution, they need to say, oh, I'm, you know, here's the, you know, the guy who's buying for the hospital, right? So, oh, here's my technology guy coming in, he's got some new technology thing. Or is he thinking, here's my new healthcare advisor specialist who's teaching me about how to improve my surgery, um, you know, processes, and he's my consultant on improving my hospitalization. Is he the guy who needs to come in and sell it? So you have to think about, who is the person who kind of expertise is going to come in and talk to your customer? What do you what do you want to be riding in on? You want to be riding in on the technology guy, or you want to be riding in on the healthcare expertise guy? Two very different kinds of thoughts. They're going to take you into very different kinds of directions about what kind of channel you really need. How do you find that person? How do you Let's find that person? <laughs> 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 well, so I, I mean, I happen to agree with Robert. I think one of the best things to do is start going to different kinds of trade shows. And start understanding how that channel works. How, how does the hospital buy? Who do they talk to? But I, I want to give you a specific advice. Pick a customer. Give, give me a name of the customer. Uh, Quick, you have to know one customer. I know 600. No, no, give me one. Give me one. Yeah, you're right. A guy, give me one. I don't know. They're, they're in a retirement home business. It's just, I don't know. Ichlov here in Tel Aviv. You will buy your product. Yatsara? As an example. Great. You go there? I did, yeah. Great. You go to the procurement guy. Why not to the technology person? No. The procurement <laughs> guy. Who also makes the decision making. The procurement guy, if he is the one that makes the decision because this is an off-the-shelf product, great. If another guy makes a decision, he will appoint you to, the, to that guy. He will tell you, great, I'm not the one to make the decision. The, the decision maker is Joseph. Great. You go there, you speak with Joseph, and you ask Joseph, Joseph, I want to help you. What the top three people that you buy from? 
finished. Then you go after these three guys, you start talking with them, and you find very quickly the first guy, no relevancy, too big. The, the, the other guy, too small. You pick the middle guy. And then, and then, you have to find the guy that will manage these channels. The way to do that is you go, I suggest, strongly suggest, you will use one of the LinkedIn recruiting agencies. You sit there with them. You well define the, the, the um, guy's specification. And guess what? The two interviews, you will understand more about this business that you can dream of. Mm -hmm. And then you have the tools to make a decision. I like this guy, I don't like this guy. You come with a short list, you fly over, you interview them, and that's what happens. You know, in that, in that distributor, if you, if you can afford it, but if you have a guy, if you go down the distributor road, if you have a guy that's dedicated, okay, or partially dedicated to your product because <coughs> you're paying their salary, I've been in the business for 20 years, so there's nothing like it. Okay, there's nothing like having a guy that's on the hook in salary, and they, they are dedicated, but they're working inside that distributor, and still you can deliver all the relationships they have. How do you find them, or how, well, how do you find a distributor is one, one question. Yeah, the other question is the guy. Take, I mean, one simple answer is take the number one sales guy in the company. Mm -hmm. I mean, or, you know, there's, there, are, there are a couple of sharpshooters in, in every company, okay? Ask who that guy is. I mean, you're gonna obviously have a very deep strategic partnership with this guy. So find out who that is. You know, work on unconvincing him to take on your product and make sure you can, you can, he can make more money with your product than the current job he has now, or something to that effect. I wanted to go back to the um, other, other case. I just want to go back to, to your question for a second, just because I think that the new Oleg to talk about, that's been here for six minutes, talk about the Israeli mindset. <laughs> now that I kind of didn't, you know, pontificate. Um, no, I, I think, uh, you know, I don't know if I, you know, yes, there's kind of all these generalizations and characteristics, but um, I think there's, um, I think it's a skill, okay? I think it's a skill that can be taught, okay? Right. Maybe not to everybody, but no, I'm in all seriousness. I think, I think it's, and I think it's a problem, not a problem, but I think it's counterintuitive to everybody in the sense that I think it's about becoming a better listener, right? I would say if we want to make it Israeli, if you don't, an Israeli has a conversation with a customer, it's probably 70% talking, 30% listening. If they can learn to flip it, okay, 70% listen, 30% talking, and then the skill part becomes in, you know, when you have that conversation and they say, well, you know, what about this feature or this benefit of your product? Okay, instead of answering the question, which is what, Everybody's proud about their product, which is exactly what they want to do, right? Say, so great, qu great question, but before I answer it, why did you ask me that question? Oh, because this, you know, we had this blow up or whatever it might be. That's ob there's obviously a lot more depth to that, to, that, to that answer, but I think that's part of the beginning of how you start looking at that. That's, I, uh, that's such a brilliant response, and uh, I find that, uh, uh, you know, my own training of Israelis, where, where they so succeed, is exactly in that place, mm -hmm. and particularly in the place of, well, uh, what I see from coming from the outside world and into Israel, that the, you know, what they call the kosim, you know, behind the kosim is actually this authenticity and creativity that's providing the innovation, and that actually the part of the Israeli, I mean, that's exactly what ends up making you suicide yourself uh, <laughs> professionally. And the part that's scary is actually the part that the entire world so appreciates and wants and will pay anything for. That ability to create under difficult situations, that ability to innovate in anywhere else in the world, they would never think of these amazing ideas. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the reason that I asked the question, to see from your perspective uh, what would be supportive. And that whole idea of listening and being supportive is not being a fraya, it's being very powerful. Mm -hmm. And it requires the price of humility. Mm -hmm. right. In humility, there are millions of dollars be made, and the real profit, I think, is a lot bigger than that, because it really, truly makes a difference. I can help you find the partners you're looking for.